It's the Mike Francesa Podcast on the Bet Rivers Network. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the Mike Francesa Podcast. Uh, after a Thursday night of regional action and a Yankee game that had uh, Yankee fans buzzing, we'll save that uh, little bit of business uh, for the end. But I promised you after the worst and the most boring uh, first four days in the, that I ever remember in the tournament and the most lopsided games in the history of the tournament, that it should lead to some very good regional semifinals and finals. And I think we're on the way. We still have to find somebody who can play UConn. I don't know that that team exists. I personally don't think it does. Um, but uh, we did get two upsets. You want to call Illinois an upset. They were a one-point underdog. They were an underdog. They were the three seed versus the two seed. They were very – I mean, I, I called the game a pick em. Uh, so, and I thought Illinois would beat them because of Shannon being so hot. He was lousy on the foul line tonight, just five of 10, but he did score 29 points in the win over Iowa state. They led all the way. They got off to a big lead and then held off Iowa state, uh, which had trouble scoring my Alabama team, which I picked to go to the final four is still there. I have to admit, I did not see Clemson there. Okay. I didn't like Arizona at all. I told you that. I didn't like Carolina. I looked for it ever for a team. I never considered Clemson. I'm very surprised by what they did. Uh, I've never liked them in the NCAA tournament. And now they're here and they played a heck of a game. Now, I did take them with the points because they had played so well in their first two games. Plus, I didn't like Arizona. So I liked them today with the points. I thought Arizona would win, but I thought that – they would lose a close game, Clemson. They wind up winning the game. Alabama, again, I mean, Arizona, again, just awful. Awful with their defense down the stretch, allowing just walk-in layups when they had to have a stop and missing so many, so many threes and playing such listless basketball. That's what I don't like about Arizona. I never have. Uh, Alabama, I thought, had a great chance. I thought they would need a bigger game from Sears. They got it from everybody. Sears had a good first half. He didn't have a big second half. Um, For him, for a normal player, he did. But the other guys really picked it up and did a great job. And Alabama kept coming back on Carolina and finally uh, beat them in a very close game. And then the Illinois game. So you had uh, three underdogs win, if you want to count Illinois. And, of course, the overpowering performance by UConn against a good San Diego State team. But here's the thing. UConn has no weakness. And their size today was an enormous factor. Even Here's the thing about it, that you knew it was going to happen in the second half. UConn was up five points, and they had missed two. They had made two of their last 16 shots, and they were still up five points. What was going to happen when they started making baskets again? Well, you know what happened. They blew them out of the building. So a nine-point lead at half, which was because of Spencer. It should have been like a three-point lead. It was a nine-point lead at half. And then the second half, they blow their doors off and win by 30. I mean, they beat San Diego State by 30. And you know what? The odds makers don't know what to do. How high can they make the line? They made the line 13 and a half to open. It kept coming down because people are thinking, hey, San Diego State's a good team, and they're a rugged team, and they're going to control tempo, and they can play defense, so it'll probably be a closer game because Northwestern played a pretty good second half. In this game today, they didn't have the big blowout first half, so that meant here we go in the second half, and I think they were upset, especially Klingon, who had a terrible first half today, Uh, and a terrific second half, dominant again, beating a San Diego State team, which is a good team, by 30, and just running away. And now UConn against Illinois, Alabama against Clemson. You know UConn's an overwhelming favorite, even though Illinois actually matches up better than most teams against them. They have size. They have shooters. They have a great offensive player in Shannon who's averaging like 30 points a game in his last 10 games. Illinois is really good. It's, I just don't think it's going to be enough because you have to play not just the perfect five minutes. You have to play a perfect game. You have to be good 
the entire game, if you let down for five minutes or have a bad five minutes, they are going to blow your doors off. That's what they did last year in the tournament. That's what they're doing again this year. They have won each of their last eight NCAA tournament games by 13 or more points in all-time record, and their average margin of victory is 23 points. Absurd how easily they are winning. So three close games. Uh, Just a quick review. Iowa State had trouble scoring. They did better in the second half. Illinois made enough shots to win the game. If if Illinois had shot well from the foul line and they were abysmal, 15 to 29, that game never would have been that close. Alabama came from behind to win that game on numerous occasions. Nelson with a sensational game, an absolutely sensational game, Grant Nelson. He averaged 12 points a game, 24 points, 12 rebounds, big shot after big shot. Uh, just an incredible game. Griffin had a big first half. Sears had a big first half, wound up with 18, only four in the second half. Griffin had a big first half. Estrada, 19 points. Uh, Alabama did what it had to do. And I'll tell you something. Their much maligned defense did a better job in the second half against Carolina. Carolina got 54 points in the first half. They only got 33 points in the second half, and they struggled. You know, they looked like they could score at will in the game. They wound up shooting 38% for the game. Alabama did a nice job. They did a nice job in keeping their own in different parts of this game. They did a nice job on defense. They got balanced scoring, and they wind up with a big win. And now, for the first time, go to the Elite Eight and are a a two-and-a-half-point favorite against Clemson. Uh, Clemson has played very well. Clemson has done an incredible job of shutting down other teams' three-point shooters. Arizona was 5 for 28 for three. 5 for 28 from three. Love, 0 for 9. Lawson, 1 for 6. Boswell, one for five. So those three guys, two for 20. And 0 for nine for Love, who was five for 18 in the game. Five for 18, and clearly uh, was a goat in that game. Uh, But that was the difference. Alabama's ability to make big shots in the second half and their ability to play sneaky good defense in the second half. And that's why they are... Now one step away, and that should be a very close game. If someone likes Clemson, I have no problem with that. Alabama has a lot of weapons, though. They'll try to play Clemson with the small lineup. Clemson will play them with the bigger lineup. Can can Clemson do what they've done to all three of their opponents? They've gotten out and held leads on them, number one. Number two... They have shut down their three-point shooting. Can they shut down Alabama's three-point shooting, which is among the best in the country? Alabama tonight made 11 threes, 11 out of 26. They shot 42%, which is very good in a big game from three. And they got four guys who all can knock down threes. And that is a lot when you have four guys who can be a threat from there. So good matchup. Give Clemson credit for the way they're playing. But I think Alabama, a team I picked to go to the Final Four, and now I'm one step away from that. All my teams are still alive. UConn, which will be a heavy favorite against Illinois. I don't have the line yet. Uh, Alabama, and of course, Purdue and Houston, who have big games still to abound. Um... The other night I gave you uh, Clemson, Alabama, UConn big, and Illinois, so I went 4-0. We'll see how we can do for tomorrow night. Tomorrow night um, in the Marquette game, I think Marquette will win, but I think NC State will cover the seven points. Gonzaga-Purdue. 
I think Purdue will win, but I think it'll be a very close game. And I would take Gonzaga and the five and a half to six points. You don't usually get Gonzaga in these games with that many points. Gonzaga's playing very well right now. I think they can match up okay against Purdue. I think it will be tough to beat Purdue in the big man. I think it'll be tough to keep their guys out of foul trouble, which is critical because he draws a million fouls. He cannot get all those Gonzaga guys in foul trouble early. But I would take the points in that game. Duke and Houston. Duke played brilliantly against James Madison. The best they have played all year. I know that Houston's not 100%. I think Houston can still out-tough Duke. The line's only three. And it might even go down more. I would take Houston. And then this is the hardest game for me, Creighton and Tennessee. And Creighton makes shots. Tennessee, do I want the toughness of Tennessee? Defensive prowess, toughness, or the shot-making, versatile shot-making of Creighton? I, I really don't have an opinion on the game. I got to pick one one way or the other. Tennessee's a two point favorite. I think Tennessee's going to win, but I really have no conviction on that game. I have to admit, uh, I'm 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 really, I, I I if I they played it five ten times, I think they'd probably go five five. I think they're very even. Um, I just think Tennessee's a little tougher, and I'm going on the idea that. Tennessee will come off the Texas game where they shot so poorly and shoot the ball better. If they don't, they're going to lose because they could have lost the Texas game. But Creighton should have lost the Oregon game because, remember, Oregon in regulation was up two, and their big man was on the line shooting one-on-one. If he makes the two free throws, the game's over. He doesn't. They come down, they tie the game up, they go to overtime, they get out of the first overtime, they go to the second overtime, Oregon runs out of gas, and they blow them out in the second overtime. So, really, Creighton's really lucky to be here. Um, I think Tennessee probably will edge them. I think we should get some really good games. I don't see any blowout game of these four. I think all should be pretty rugged games. I picked Houston and Purdue. I still would like to see. I'd like to see the Houston team get to the Final Four. I would like to see Purdue get to the championship game against UConn. Because I'd like to see the two big men square off. I think it would be fascinating. Now, again, UConn has the best supporting cast by a wide margin. They're the best team. They're not only the best team, they're playing like the best team. They're playing with an air of invincibility right now that has not been knocked. Now, you can say to yourself, hey, I just want to see them even with two minutes left and see how they react. That's a very fair thing to say about them. But you know what? It never happens. It didn't happen in last year's tournament. It didn't happen often this year. This is a team that's lost one game when healthy since Christmas. And that was a game where uh, Creighton on a Wednesday night shut the lights out at home against them. Shot the lights out from three. That's the only time they've lost when healthy this year. That team is scary good. And they beat San Diego State tonight. And for a lot of the game, I didn't even think they played well. And they won by 30. I mean, it's reached a crazy stage with them. And, like, I don't, I don't know what the oddsmakers do with them because how 
you look at the Northwestern line, you're saying, wow. You're looking at the San Diego State line, which is a legitimately tough, well-coached team. And you're saying how many points? That's why a lot of people looked at the line and said, wait a second, I'm taking San Diego State with that many points. It's crazy. I think that will be the case with Illinois. People will be taking them again. Why? Because they're going to get 10 points. UConn opened a 10-point favorite. Given Illinois 10 points, you look at that Illinois team with a tremendous player, with a player you could make the case as the best offensive player in the country in Shannon, who had 29 tonight, who had 40 and 34 to close out the Big Ten, who has scored at will in this tournament. Tonight went out with four fouls, came right back in, banged their home a three that may have been the biggest basket in the game when they were up two. The only thing he didn't do tonight was he didn't make foul shots. He was five or ten from the foul line. He usually is a, you know, 75% foul shooter. He didn't tonight. It is very, very hard. You know, very hard to... You know, to look at Illinois and not say, wow, with the points, wait a second, that line was not correct. Let me put, let me get the, let me get the correct line. That line was not correct. It was, it's, I think it's going to be higher. Hold on. No, it's, no, it's not. It's actually lower now. It's, they adjusted it. It's now UConn eight and a half. So they're giving, they are giving Illinois about as much respect as they've given anybody. They are making Illinois eight and a half. It'll be interesting to see which way that line goes. Now, Illinois is a legitimate top team with a great offensive player. And I think with their size and their shooting ability and their rebounding, they match up about as well as a team can with UConn. So we'll see which way it goes. Right now, they've made UConn an eight-and-a-half-point favorite. They've made Alabama a a two-and-a-half-point favorite. Those will be Saturday, and then the the winners from Friday will play on Sunday, and then we will have the Final Four, which is going to be in Arizona next week. So Marquette, NC State, Marquette's a seven-point favorite. Gonzaga's a five-and-a-half to six-point favorite. I mean, Purdue's a five-and-a-half to six-point favorite. Uh, right now, Houston's a three-point favorite, and Tennessee's a two-point favorite, as we look at it right now. Now, a minute or two on the Yankees. Um, this was a game that if you're a Yankee fan and you've been waiting, you know, so long to finally unveil this product, even though the injuries have, you know, dampened things a little bit, dampened a little of the optimism, especially the coal uh, setback. But you've wanted to see Soto get out there. Now, today, they get off to a bad start. Cortez gets off to a bad start. They're down 4 nothing after he gives up the long home run. They're down 4 nothing. All right, they hit the double plays. I mean, the the Astros, you know, Valdez is walking the ballpark and getting double plays to stay out of the jam, inning after inning after inning, and you're just shaking your head because he did that. Then he strikes out. He gives up the the single to Soto, which gives the Yankees their first run of the season, and he strikes out Judge and Stanton, and then obviously... Hits Rizzo for the second run, leaves, and they walk in the third run. And then, obviously, they get the lead on the home run. Uh, But the Cabrera home run gives them the the lead. And you got to credit the bullpen and Cortez. Cortez for throwing scoreless innings for three and not killing the bullpen. Lewisica, Hamilton. Now, Holmes did give up three hits, and he gets helped out. And who would have thought that on a day where the Yankees get, you know, a lot of guys chipping in, Soto gets an RBI with a base hit, Verdugo gets an RBI with a sack fly, Volpe gets an RBI with a walk, you know, Rizzo gets an RBI with a hit batter, 
Cabrera hits a home run and then sort of wins the game by throwing out a runner with a great tag. And they wind up, despite the hits Holmes gives up, uh, they come away with the opening day win in Houston, which makes it sweet. Uh, so there were some things to be positive about today. Uh, you liked, you know, the patience that Volpe showed, a better understanding of the strike zone. If he, you know, listen, I don't know if there was a game last year where he walked three times. I don't even know if there was one in the whole season, to be honest with you. He sure didn't walk a lot. Um, the Yankees struck out as they always do, but they did walk nine times today. Houston walked the ballpark time and time again uh, and, you know, got the Yankees back in the game. The Yankees didn't do it with any overpowering offense today, but they dinged them, you know, here and there and then got the pitching and got the defense from Soto. So in a very memorable first game, he gets – the hey, remember his first game where he throws a guy out at the plate uh, and preserves the victory for the Bombers. So the Yankees get a win. Mets were rained out. They will open tomorrow against uh, Milwaukee. Yanks will play because they don't need a day f- for a cushion in case there's a rainout because there can't be a rainout in Houston because they have a roof. So uh, the Yankees will be playing the first seven days because they don't have to worry about any rain from that standpoint. So um, they will play three more in Houston and then three in Arizona before they uh, come home and they get a win in game number one. The Weisinger gets the victory. Uh, And again, there were some things to be happy about. And I'm sure the throw and the outcome put a big smile on every Yankee fan's face for game number one uh, of the season. So, Baseball is upon us. The Mets get their opener tomorrow. Uh, Looks like they should get a decent day. Might not be that warm, but at least it's supposed to be uh, sunny and, you know, mostly sunny and 54 degrees. So you can live with that as we get uh, a good Friday tomorrow and then head to the Easter weekend. Looks like sunny on Saturday and Sunday with the temperatures in the 50s. So, you know, that's not bad. It's not, it's not unbelievable, but it's not bad. You can live with that. And we are uh, four games away from getting ready to decide who will play in this year's Final Four. And, you know, some of the big favorites are still here. A lot of them still are. But a couple of them said goodbye today, including uh, NC State. Excuse, excuse me, including NC and Arizona, who a lot of people, you know, picked one or the other in that West to go to the Final Four. They're both gone, and now it is an Alabama team that, honestly, I didn't hear anybody pick except me. I I mean, and I picked them by a process of elimination. Um, I knew they could score, and that's why I picked them. And I thought maybe because last year was so brutal when they were supposed to do well that this would be a different year this year. But um, I really did it because I didn't like Arizona or Carolina. And I, I am stunned by Clemson's play. I have to admit, I did not expect Clemson to do this at all. And I've never seen uh, Clemson present itself any better than it has in this tournament. They have not been a good tournament team. And this year, uh, they've done a wonderful job. And you know what? Either Alabama or Clemson is on their way to a Final Four. And... Uh, We'll see who joins them uh, as we have Alabama and Clemson, UConn and Illinois. Those are the Saturday games. And then four games tomorrow night. And then by Sunday, we'll have four, uh, the final four. And away we go. And we'll be looking forward to a full week of baseball, the final four. And, of course, we are starting to zoom in on the Masters, which is something we look forward to. Uh, each and every year. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for listening to the Mike Francesa podcast on the Bet Rivers Network.